So I think we can start the workshop today to serve time for all of us. Uh, hi everyone, welcome to WiseLine and WiseLine Academy with the AGI estimating workshop today. Uh, let me introduce briefly about myself. I'm Ngoc Nguyen, I am Academy Program Manager at WiseLine. Uh, before we start and going to the main content of the workshop, um, I would like to share with you about WiseLine and WiseLine Academy very briefly. Yeah. So if you haven't heard about WiseLine, if you haven't heard about WiseLine, we are the software de design and development company uh, with the operation in the US, Mexico, Vietnam, Australia and Spain with more than six years of experience. Right now, we have more than 1,300 1, employees around the world, both physically in the office and remote team. We, we, started, we started at a product company and gradually we migrated into services. We realized that we could have other high growth company to build better product through our different discipline. In the next slide, you can see that we offer different services from technical writing, US designer, project management, and all engineering discipline. For example, site reliability, uh, testing, QA, AI, mobile. WiseLine is a trusted ally of the brands such as National Geographic, Nest Fox Network, and the Washington Post. In the slide, we proudly to present to you our client who we partner we have partnership with them in the past or currently. As a part of our culture, WiseLine empower employee and the community to innovate and grow their career. This is the reason why WiseLine Academy was created. Uh, WiseLine Academy is a free learning education platform that we offer about workshop, talk, or certification in today's most high value skill of technology, such as AI, technical writing, um, software development, project management, or US designer. So we are available via all social media. You can follow us like Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube, linking for upcoming courses. So today I will handle the mic to our main um, speaker, Hwata and Barony. Hey, um, welcome everybody. And uh, uh, today we are gonna share an uh, uh, interesting workshop about our GIS meeting. Uh, we actually, we have two sessions. The, the first session is about our GIS estimating and the next one will be happening next two days will be the GI planning. So hopefully we can have something to share and, and it will be helpful to your daily work. So before we start, I have some, some, some rules that we, we really need you to support on this one. The first thing is to identify yourself in Zoom using your name and last name so we can identify who you are. And if you are not talking or asking questions, you may mute your microphone. So it, will, it won't uh, let the background noise come into the other uh, members. And if you have any questions during the sections, feel free to uh, raise that into the um, chat box so we can come back to the que questions when we have some time. And we got into the questions because we have so many members joining and also we have limited time. So focus your question in the presented topic only. And if you have any problem about the uh, bandwidth, the uh, connection issue, you may turn off the cameras to save the bandwidth. All right, so now let's get go, go ahead and get started. Um, I would like to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Huata and I, I have been working with WiseLife for two and a half years. Uh, currently, I'm taking the role of Senior Project Manager at WiseLife and I have more than 10 years working with Agile and uh, the project I've been working, uh, 
in multiple areas. I work with uh, e-commerce, I work with uh, financial services, and I had uh, several years working in US and Singapore as well. From my personal life, I am married. I have three boys at home. Uh, I love photography and love to talk and connect with everybody else. Uh, I will let my uh, co-worker Barani to introduce himself. He will be uh, with me today to share their sessions. So thanks, Ngop and Hua. Hey, hi, everyone. I'm Barani here. Yes, I am currently based in Vietnam too, where I take care of uh, project delivery for Wiseline in Asia Pacific region. I spent my last 15 years driving large projects for predominantly for banks and financial institutions. I do spend a lot of time in Southeast Asia recently in the last 10 years, but I do, do spend some time in Dubai, London, and, uh, some part of the Middle East. Um, glad to meet you all. Um, like Hua said, you I, you all need, can introduce yourself in the Slack, uh, uh, sorry, uh, in the Zoom chat uh, channel. Uh, we also would like to know you guys more. Um, I want to go into the agenda. So before, before I run through the agenda items, uh, this session is intended for members in uh, an agile team who play a part in the overall process of software projects and delivery. So we keep it limited uh, because um, estimation can go across uh, multiple. And typically it's for developers, scrum masters, product owners, um, quality assurance teams, et cetera. Um, Agile estimation here is a very specific to how we estimate work during the sprint planning and execution phase. There's also an estimation we do during uh, pre-sales and engagement phase. Uh, this is not covering that part. So it's only during the sprint execution and planning stage. Um, let's start with the agenda items. We'll start with some of the challenges uh, we all experience in the context of estimation. And then uh, we'll quickly move in, walk through some of the estimations types we have and how these methods are applied and where they make sense to apply. Uh, we also touch upon uh, story point estimation, why and where we use story point estimation in Agile and not mandates. We also speak about a velocity estimation, why is done, what are the benefits of tracking velocity. At the end of the session, we'll, we'll have a Q&A session, but that doesn't stop you guys from dropping a slack as and when you find clarification on that specific topic. Uh, we normally do this uh, as a group. We also have a group exercise in the agenda, but uh, since it's an online remote, uh, we didn't do that. But uh, that that doesn't stop. I think probably we'll find out a way to accommodate group exercise using remote tools going forward. Okay, um, I want to go into the uh, first topic of the agenda. Um, challenges. Estimation is an art of guessing, like what we wanted to know is uh, since you all may come from different domains, industries, practices, and disciplines, we wanted to know from you, uh, what are the current challenges you all facing in estimation or agile estimating? So can I request you all to let share your top challenges in estimation? Please use uh, Zoom chat to respond in a very few words possible, some of your key challenges. I'll give you a minute for you all to do this.
so as we as we uh, uh, get uh, more uh, chat response i'll read some of them over committing is the key challenge avoid underestimating top management needs estimation in days and hours where in agile is against such estimation focus on relative estimates and estimating with incomplete requirements and stay under budget constraints that's how interesting <laughs> it's very interesting yeah um let's go to the industry uh, like some of the very few uh, key challenges we face in our industry as such um which we already have uh, listed out here um, estimating uh, um, with unclear requirements is one of the top challenges across the industry which is basically our software development or digital and we also have various um estimation channel challenges in different like wherein uh, estimation was done by a different team and execution is being asked to be given given by another team um this is another common challenge um another one is the estimation estimating something which the requirement itself is not clear or the business has not been uh, defined to start uh, work so estimating an unfinished requirements and uh, business teams like what uh, was mentioned in the chat business teams promises unrealistic deliverables and then we as a development team are are stuck in this uh, which uh, who will explain in a minute about magic and there are a few other uh, challenges uh, which we face also team spends less time in estimation there are poor practices being followed um, in the estimation and process itself and uh, many at times teams do skip estimation as a whole that means they don't do estimate they jump into uh, development itself um we will try addressing all these items i think uh, those uh, which come in the chat we will uh, ha have to address that in the part of our estimation i'll go through one by one um let's quickly before i go into the actual um, uh, estimation itself i want to give a quick overview um of what agile as an approach itself is mm, let me start with the story there is an old philosophy joke i don't know whether many of you have heard about this where uh, two fishes are swimming in an ocean one looks at the other and says the water looks pretty cloudy today the other fish looks back and says like yeah what's water I love this joke because it shows the way we do things often becomes a part of our own reality. It's the water we are floating in without even thinking. Uh, we don't even question the way we work. Instead, we think that the way we work is the only way that makes sense. No, yet the water we swim isn't always uh, clear. It might be. It might seem natural that. Uh, we have a set of skills that makes uh, you a specialist like uh, maybe you are a project manager or a database engineer so you focus on the, those skills when you are working it might uh, be seem natural for you only to work on detail plans otherwise you might have to uh, do rework which is a bit costly in fact uh, it might be more uh, efficient to have a generalist instead of a specialist instead of having a few people who really know one area it might make sense to have everyone to know a little bit about everything it also makes sense to focus on short term planning so instead of focusing on eliminating work you're actually embarrassing uncertainty some of these ideas are more commonly known as agile approach so the key aspects of agile approach is as follows like we'll go to one by one now can we go to the next slide sorry um okay uh, I, i would like to share another story that uh, maybe you you will find that familiar with the thing that you already share on the chat and also with the thing that you normally see on your daily work so the story come come with the 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 point of the sales team promises with, with a client a, a deliverable 
with a very specific time and very specific cost. For example, they really want to get a deal. So they want to, they promise with the client, oh, I will deliver that to you at that day and with the, the cost like this one. And somehow you know that it is not realistic. You with experience the, in the project management and experience with the team management, you understand that with that team, we cannot make that at this very specific time. And the cost could be much higher. And you come back with sales team and say, no, it's not realistic. But there's something happening that the management team come to you and say that, I don't know, this is the, the very, uh, very good opportunity and we want to get a connection with this client. I don't care what you do, do some magic, get it done, please do it. So as a project manager, you have to take that. Sometimes you need to push back and so, for some reason, they, they, they push you to, into the situation and somehow you still manage to deliver by some magic. So what is that magic to make that happen? So let's think about what happened. Maybe you can deliver that, but you have a lot of things you have to trade up with the overtime, with the stride, with the, the team uh, spirit and the relationship broken and, and some bad situation that some people will feel bad and they, they would like to leave the company because of the bad uh, project that they worked on. So how to avoid this? We don't have any very specific uh, way to avoid this, but we will bring you, uh, I, we, would, we think that a nature agile approach will make things more clear and avoid this situation happen again. So Barani will share with you about an agile approach. So Barani, are you there? Sorry, I you able to hear me? Yep. Oh, sorry. I think I just uh, dropped. Um, see, one of the key uh, principles, some of the key principles of agile approach is um, individuals and interaction over processes and tools. This is actually listed in the agile manifesto. Um, so the idea is to create a self-organized team and collaborate the team with cross-functional skills. Uh, remember the fish in the ocean. Um, work, uh, work in short iteration, clear goals to ac accomplish something within the two weeks time period. Um, I want to tell a story here. I once worked for an organization on a large project. The, the project had started six months earlier after I arrived. Um, I asked I uh, asked to see the project charter. I figured out that the charter is always a good way to see the overall um, direction of the project. One thing I, I immediately noticed is that there isn't any success criteria to finish the project and there was no overall um, mission. I asked about this and the scrum master said, as long as they keep delivering value, the team would be successful. In some ways, what the scrum master said was right. A key tenant for Agile is adapting to deliver value and not predicting the value before you break in. So that's delivering value in each iteration. Like focus on business priorities. This is one of the reason we write user stories in a way it's today. Like, you know, I as a user wants this and that. Uh, is to capture as many in information as possible in user stories. So that will help us prioritize business values. Um, in Infect and adapt. So uh, you will see what are the, uh, one of the success criteria which Agile has been used largely today is it's able to welcome changes. So old school, we have a plan, we stick to the plan and we deliver the plan, and then we take change. We are re very resistant to change. But with Agile and mental mindset to try new things and adapt and then change is, is what has made Agile a very successful methodology now. Um, transparency. This is always uh, misinterpreted as a communication failure. See, communication failure um, can be addressed. So we can do active facilitation too. But transparency, there's no way. It's a people issue. So one of the key challenges in organization today is ensuring 
teams are transparent against each other. This is one of the very key um, approach in Agile. Mm. So that's it. So on the Agile approach, let's. Uh, so I just want to give you an all an overview before we start into the estimation. Um, let's quickly jump into the next of uh, phase of Agile estimation. So I, I would like to share with you about an overview about Agile estimating how uh, how we are doing that. So let's say if we have a, um, a situation like this one, someone asks you how long it could take to read the full set of Harry Potter book. It is not an easy thing to say that, okay, I, I, it would take me about one week, two weeks, or maybe a month to read the full of that. If you look at the full set of the book and somehow you may have the historical data that the similar book, you may, it may take you about one or two days to finish that. And then the rest of the book be, uh, the, the similar. So uh, comparing between the book will be much easier than the very specific time. For example, here, if I have the time, amount of time to read the book number one, so the book number two should be similar because it have the same thickness. Uh, it may have a little bit different because of the, like the context inside, the, um, the story inside, or maybe the, the numbers of the uh, animated uh, illustration picture in there and but you can compare roughly about the thickness of the book and you understand that I don't know how much of time I can spend for the book number one but I know exactly that I know that it could it could take about uh double time of the number the time I read for the book number one to read the book number four for example so uh and that is how you read the book but let's say if we change the, the questions to how long it would take for a kid to read the full set of the book. So you don't know exactly how much the time the uh, a kids will spend on one book, but you can uh, compare the, between the book and you understand that the book number four could be a double time on the book number one, similar to the, an, another person uh, looking up to that. So that is the introduction about how we do the estimation at, in Archive with the absolute number and also with the relative numbers. So compare between the absolute Estimating and relative estimating. For example, if someone asks you how much of time your team could build a house for me, like this one, and they, they ask you to come back with the numbers of the time. So you may have the estimation about, okay, it would take my team to build this, this house in eight weeks, and the bigger house should be around 20 weeks. But that is the estimation, and it never comes exactly the time you estimate it. In reality, it could take up to 12 weeks or maybe more than that, depending on the situation you have on the week. But if you don't know exactly how much of time you spend on each, uh, each house, but you know that if you spend uh, an X amount of time on the, on the house number one and the house number number two, if you see their, com their complexity, you may you may roughly compare between the number one and number two, and you can come up with the numbers of like, for example, three X. So as people, we are good at comparing between objects rather than having the absolute number estimation. Uh, so I will, we will uh, talk, uh, we will share uh, uh, about actual estimation. I will transfer back to Barani for this one. Barani, you're talking on mute. Sorry. Uh, so see, when, when it comes to Agile estimation, we, we have the three categories uh, or three different uh, uh, sessions we do estimations. One is at the epics or theme level. There is a way we do estimation for that. Uh, the second one is at the user story level. Um, so at the user story level, this is the most important. We, we follow an estimation uh, process called story points. There is way other um, methodologies to do that. Um, I'll, I'll come to that again. And the third one would be task. Task is, is where we actually have a granular uh, information and we estimate that at by hours or days. Um, let me go back to the um, grouping by themes and the epics. I mean, sometimes um, user stories uh, start their lives as epics. The product owner usually creates a large value statement 
instead of several small user stories that's okay right that's uh, that's just the way most people think a theme or an epic is a way and organize uh, to way to organize uh, user stories into group so you might have an epic to upgrade um, your database it's important to remember that these are large big epics and not same as user stories and they are naturally grouped together and uh, we need to split them up epic splitting isn't an easy task right there are several common ways to split um, epics into user stories so when you when you when you estimate the epics um, we use a methodology so there are many methodologies one of the methodologies we are trying to uh, method is uh, t shirt sizing so consider you are asked to measure t shirt that size of a t shirt most of us uh, could look at a t shirt and uh, make a good guess as to whether it's small big large um, most importantly if we are shown two t shirts of different sizes and asked to decide whether one is bigger we would almost certainly get it right if you are given a big pile of t-shirt and asked to sort them into three piles by size we probably would would do pretty well in that task too right uh, this idea of relative sizing like what uh, hua explained earlier is the fundamental driver in in agile estimation it turns out that uh, just, just like the we are pretty good in ranking t-shirts uh, by their relative sizes, uh, development teams are pretty good at ranking stories at their relative sizes. In the same way, we have a hard time um, guessing the exact width of a t-shirt. It can be difficult for development teams, you know, to guess exactly how long a task will take. Instead, uh, like how we'd uh, find it easier to rank t-shirts by their size, teams are better ranking um, stories um, and on epics related to the size we should also consider some of the key things which we consider during uh, epic estimation is the the complexity uh, risk um, time and those relevant factors at a higher level um, story points so so at, at epic and themes we normally do relative estimation using like t-shirt method but at, when it comes to story points in agile we don't uh, we are not estimating for individuals um, you are estimating work for the entire team uh, many different developers on the team work on the same stories some developers might like decide to um, decide the story is more complex and some some might say it's not there are no ways to tell which developers is right until the, the work begins or until the work is complete most of the case um one of the one of the uh, one of the method we use uh, for estimating uh, story point is a planning poker right um, planning poker is a card game that helps the team to get uh, the best story estimate with less less than perfect information you know planning poker gives uh, everyone a voice uh, it's not just by creating an estimate. In many ways, the estimation is just the byproduct of the game. The, the activity uh, really is, is the activity we are doing uh, while doing a planning poker is avoiding the groupthink. Uh, what is groupthink? Groupthink is a way that people tend to agree with the most popular idea. The strongest voice will drown out any disagreements. Uh, planning poker tries to combat this tendency. Like a lot of card games, pe people often uh, end up cheating, right? Uh, real poker, right? Uh, same in planning poker, but it, but in this case, no one is hiding an ace up their sleeves or counting cards. Uh, this is a different kind of cheating. It happens because it's very difficult to play planning poker well. Keep in mind, planning poker is typically a part of the sprint planning or a black backlog refinement um, ceremony or session. Um, uh, I'll explain you in a later stage what, what, are, what are the ways, I mean, uh, Hoa will explain you in a later uh, session in detail about the story point estimation itself. I'll let, let that uh, for that session. Estimating in task. Uh, someone asked uh, when and why we do um, estimation at hours or mandates. Remember, 
relative estimating and all the project planning in, in hours and days it means uh, in weeks sometimes in weeks in these meetings you will you'll go around the team team asking time estimates often the metric is more precise than the team's ability so they'll end up giving a range like two to three days or four to five hours they'll say it'll take one or two like uh, either one so the agile doesn't fix how bad the team are estimating instead the team spends more less time in this in this activity itself remember from an agile perspective not doing something is the fastest way to get it done the team won't think in in uh, hours or days or weeks they'll be thinking in relative sizing also so but for task where where which is which is the most vulnerable item in the work list you'll be able to estimate in hours because it's more likely uh, an action done by one person individual and uh, many a times tasks should be able to estimate in hours if it requires few days then it needs to be broken broken down into few other tasks mm. i will uh, i will uh, jump to the next session where uh, who will go through the story point estimation up to you. Okay, so thanks, Barney. Uh, now we are going to a major part. It is story point estimating. It is the activity that we normally do with, with uh, all the Scrum team. We have that uh, in the spring planning on, or in this, uh, which, uh, on the spring grooming, the backlog grooming session that we, we do the estimation with the task, with the story in the backlog and prepare for the planning. So how do we do that? Um, let's give an example. Let's say your team is uh, assigned to pen their house with a floor plan like this one, and you never seen the house yet. So you don't know how much of time you need to spend on this one, but you need to, uh, to estimate, uh, roughly estimate uh, for the work being done by your team. Uh, you come with the floor plan and you don't know, uh, you, may, you may have different teams to work on this one. So the first thing you come up with this one is you find the easiest room to fill the painting. For example, we have the hallway. It is very simple with the less the amount of walls to be painted. And then you assign that the next values. You don't know how much of time you need to spend on that. And you come up with another room, for example, the, uh, the bedroom, uh, the bathroom and the living room. So it will be similar to, uh, it will be a little bit uh, more complex. And then you see that maybe I will need a double time and effort to spend on this room rather than the other. And you compare with the other as well. It will be more, a little bit more than the, the bathroom, but uh, still similar to each other. So you assign that to an amount of three, three times compared to the first, uh, to the uh, entrance. Now you come to the biggest room uh, in, in the house. It is the living room. You don't know how, uh, how much effort you need to spend on that, you can roughly increase the number of, of effort you may spend on that because of the uh, windows, uh, because of the furniture moving, because of a lot of corner, it's, it put a lot of effort to spend on, on that one. So you may add a sign and, and a values of five X into there. So you don't know how much of time you need to spend on the next values. For example, you have experience with a similar room then you, your, your, time, you, your team will be working faster and more effective. And if you haven't had any, any kind of painting like this one, so you will have a lot of, of things that could happen. For example, the material will be hard to paint on, or um, maybe the, the paint that the, the home, the house owner one is very specific uh, paint that is really, that need a very specific skill to depend on. So it depends on the situation that you can, you, you can have a different amount of X here, but comparing between the rooms, you can have the rough, the, the comparison would not be changed during the time. So uh, come back to the software development. If you, if you can if you consider it of painting, any room here is like a user story. And you close the entrance here is like the unit story that unit story is the story that have the less amount of effort spending on that 
and you assign that as one point. And then you, you, we can we can uh, replace the X by the points. Then you can see the every single user story will have an assign a, a numbers of points, the two two X, three X, and five X. That is how we do the estimation with the story point. And come back to there with uh, the software development when we have the backlog. The first time when the team is working on the estimation, we will define the unit user story. The unit user story is the agree between the team members. So everyone in the team review the backlog and, and find the very basic user story that they agree that it will be a simple one. And they assign that as one point, uh, one point. And then any other user story, they will compare with that user story. So let's say the, the next user story is a little bit bigger than the first one. They increase the number the numbers to two points. And uh, the next one is bigger than the second one. You can assign that to three points. So how do we come back with the numbers? Uh, normally, we, we, when we do the story point estimating, we just comparing between story together. We don't know how much of time we spend on one point, but we agree together in the team that the, very, uh, the, uh, the unit story will, will be assigned as one point. And uh, we increase number based on the complexity and effort we spend on that. And we are, the, normally we are using the modified Fibonacci string like one, two, three, five, and eight, 13, 20, or you can see that we have the number of 20, 40, and, and, and 100. It is not like the Fibonacci, uh, the original Fibonacci string. The reason why we are doing that is like when we, when the story is too much bigger than the, the unit story, then the level of uncertainty is higher. So a lot of things we are not sure that, so then the, the estimation will be uh, the, the distance between the, the previous level of the bucket uh, numbers of the previous user story will be, the distance will be bigger. So we compare by that. Some team may change, some team doesn't like to use their uh, Fibonacci number. They may come up with their another way to do their story point assigning by using the one, two, four, or double. They double the, the effort if the complexity is increased. So how do we do that? We do story point by sharing the whole team, and and we don't we don't come we don't uh, imagine that the still the story will be handled by being with, developed by a very specific developer. We we estimate based on the effort of the whole team. So story point estimating, there will be some common mistake that we normally. Uh, phase that um, I would like to share here. The first thing I'm seeing mostly in, um, in during the time I work with it's my Scrum team, sometimes we do their uh, uh, estimation with the story point and we forget about their testing effort. The developer, mostly in the team, we have many developers rather than the QA. So the developers, sometimes they just care about how much of effort they spend on developing the uh, a feature. They don't care much about how much of effort they spend on verifying that feature to be delivered. So that is the very common mistake. When doing the estimation by story point, we need to share the estimation with the whole team. So make sure that everyone has, has voice on that. Their UX designer, the QA, the uh, DevOps, and also the developer sharing the effort. They, they need to estimate the, the complexity to deliver the feature, not to just finish development. And sometimes we have another mistake that somehow in some team, they translate a story point to hours to, to do the estimation. For example, they have a user story, which is uh, they spend, they, they normally spend eight hours to work on the user story. So when they see there another user story with the complexity is a little bit higher. So they add that, add, okay, one, one story point, I spent eight hours. So then two user story point, two story point, I will spend 16 hours. But actually that is not right because story point are relative and where hours is very uh, absolute numbers. Sometimes the story point is added because of the uncertainty that we are not sure about a user story when we don't know much about a feature to be developed. 
then we assign the complexity higher. So we have to have the, their numbers higher. And uh, when we having uh, when, when we have hours, that means we need to have exactly uh, what technology we are using. Well, who is the developer to be worked on to be working on that user story? So then we will know the performance of each developer will be different. So the hours could be different based on the user story, but the complexity complexity remain the same. And another the mistake that we uh, sometimes having is averaging the story point. For example, when we have a user story with two points, so then, uh, we, um, so then we have another user story, it's a little bit complex, more complex than that user story. Instead of having five, uh, we, we discovered that, okay, some members still coming back with the numbers, okay, it is, it is more complex than the other one. So we, we want to increase that to five story point. But some other members saying that, no, I think it should be around three story point. So we come up with, a, with a, the, the decision is about the average number of four. So it is not right because the, the story point is relative. That means we compared about the complexity. We see that if it is too much complex, we short into the next bucket. We don't, we don't put in the middle. So be, the reason why we have the distance between two and three is just only one, but from three and five, we have two in, in a gap. The reason is about when we have more complexity coming to the user story, the uncertainty is higher, uncertainty level is higher. So if we, if we consider that it's too much uh, blurry to do the estimation, we put that at a higher bucket. And if it is still lower and we confident that, okay, it should be lower a bit. So we, we bring back into the three user story point. And another mistake that normally we have is like before the sprint start, we estimate some user story to put into the sprint. And during the time of working and we see that, no, it is more complex than we expected. It's more complex than we, we thought. Then we have just the user story during the time of the sprint. Uh, it is not right because the estimation is an estimation. Like we shared earlier, the estimation is to find out of guessing. We just guess at the time we have the information. So sometimes the estimation is not accurate. It is fine because that is the very basic of estimation. Estimation is never be accurate. It's just more accurate than the other. It's not never be absolute accurate. So we will adjust the way we, we do the estimation later because of we, we know how much complex of the user story it is. And a similar user story, maybe we, we can learn, understand, and maybe changing that. Uh, so another thing is like we story point a bug. For example, in in uh, in the sprint that we are doing, we finish some user story, and then we have some bug arise. Then the team had to spend time to work on those bugs. They want to add the user story point for those bugs. The reason is. They want to have their big amount of, uh, of story to be delivered, story point to be delivered by the end of spring. They they think that it will reflect there for their spending, but sometimes it is right, sometimes it is wrong. Why it is right and wrong? The the thing here is if the point the if the bug is arrived from a user story, actually it, their effort spending on that bug is already covered by the complexity of the user story, the original one. So when we do the estimation for the user story, the complexity cover that we may have some defect arise. But sometime when we have the regression test, we arise some, we, we see some bug, which has uh, been a long time for the, the existing there when we only have, um, it happened when we do the regression test. So at, that is at additional work for the store uh, for the spin. So we may end up with some agreement of having the point for that, for that effort to measure the, the, the effort spending on the team. But if we think of uh, the, the story point representing the, 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 the deliverable of the, the feature deliverable, that means we don't, uh, store, uh, we don't wait the, the bug for a story point. 
And the next one is like sometimes we have a very small task. It is the it is it is like for example the develop the DevOps team need to work on the CI/CD. They need to build up the deployment framework or some kind of that, and they want to assign the the story point for that because they say it is the effort I'm spending. It is something I'm spending my my time to work on that. I need to have the story point for that. But there uh, the the um, the DevOps work, for example. Uh, changing the CI/CD, building up their deployment framework. It is not a feature to de be delivered with the product. So it is, it is assigned us. So we don't weigh the story point for that because it won't add up into the, uh, the, fit, the, the list of features we deliver by the end of the sprint. <laughs> um, so another thing is like in the in sprint, we have some story. And we have numbers for the story point assigned to that story. And then by the end of the sprint, we think we cannot finish that. Somehow we cannot make that, we cannot deliver that, and we stretch into the next sprint. So we still, uh, so the team doesn't want to lose that story point uh, to deliver, to show up with the stakeholder that we deliver something. They, they finish the half of the, the story. So they count that story point. Like for example, we have the uh, five story points assigned to the, the story, and then we just finish a half of the user story. So we decide that we move the st the story to the next screen, and we still count the, that into the estimation of the t of the of the screen. Is like okay, we spend a little bit of effort in this one, so we we want to. Uh, consume three points of that user story into that uh, the, the spin deliverable. And then the next spin, we, we still uh, each, uh, we still assign that user story and then count that effort into five five story uh, into three user story points. But it is not right because somehow we could not deliver the, the feature by the end of the story uh, by the end of the spin. That means there's no user story point uh, gains for that story. So then we need to we need to deduct that numbers of story point for that story from that screen, and if we move that story to the next screen, then um, the the number will be added up to the next screen completely. Um, uh, another thing is like this is happening many times in in my team uh, earlier. So sometimes when when the team is working, they have they know that very specific developer will work on that story. He had experience. He he had a, a very he had a very strong skill, and he had experience working in a similar user story in another project. So he will do that very quick compared to the other. So when we know that 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 use that developer will take care of the the feature of the story, we assign very low number of story points to that story. It is not right because the estimation is for the story and it can be picked up and worked by any members in the team. It's not for a very specific de developer. So how come when the, the, the first developer pick it up and then he transferred to someone else? So the estimation is not right anymore. So we want to have with the, the estimation that anyone in the team could be working on that one. Anyone in the team agree on, on that complexity. And another very common mistake is like, when we do the estimate, est uh, estimation with the sprint planning or uh, with this, the, the backlog grooming sessions. So sometimes all the member in the team just look into the tech lead or someone have strong experience saying that, okay, how many points you are giving? And they just, they tend to follow that. So the, the key member saying that this user story about a complexity, I'm seeing that it's just two points. So some sometime another developer he is new he is he doesn't have experience on that he might think in him in his mind about I I will keep that five story point but the other member the the, the lead developer saying that it's just two story point so I should agree with him about two story point instead instead of having uh, too much different uh, numbers so it is not a good way to it is not a way we do with our chai team because like I shared earlier, the estimation is shared between the team member, and that one will be 
uh, understand and 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 share with all the member. All the member will be will agree on that estimation. So if we have the gap in the estimation, for example, if we one member, most of the member have the number of two, for example, another one have just only one because he's he's seeing something, uh, and another member seeing a sign that uses sorry to five points, so the gap is too much bigger. We let them share the thought. Maybe the developer who say the, that the story is just one point, he missed something, or maybe he understands something that that the other member doesn't know. The, the, uh, so, and beside that other member, for example, the, the member who is giving the, uh, the numbers of five story points for the story compared to the most of, of the other member who are giving just only two points for that, maybe he, he misunderstand something in the requirement. Maybe he, he never worked on something similar. Maybe um, that is the technology he, he never known. So that is the reason why he come back with that. So sharing between the team will make that uh, will make that clear and everyone will understand and sharing the same thing. And the team will be working together in the backlog. This is not for a specific person who work on the story. Um, that are the common mistakes that we are thinking of. If you have any other things, uh, please share with us. All right, so now I transfer back to uh, Barani for the velocity estimating. Well, um, velocity estimating, do you, do you guys see anything uh, wrong here? Wait, what? Because uh, we don't uh, estimate velocity, uh, we only measure the velocity. Um, since we have some time, I'm going to tell you guys a story. Um, you see, 1914, Henry Ford noticed that his employees work best when limited to eight hours of work hours, right? Eight work hours. After eight hour work hours, the productivity began to slow down. Uh, that's why Ford established this uh, 40 hours of work week. This change increased their productivity and many companies soon followed this. That's why the 40 hour uh, work week becomes standard during the, the manufacturing or industrial uh, revolution period. In 1980s, fewer people worked in uh, manufacturing. Um, they become desk workers, computer programmers, because of this, many employers felt this 40 hours work week was outdated. It only made sense in manufacturing, right? Uh, working 70 hours a week become a badge of honor for desk workers or computer programmers. See, the agile uh, framework pushes this back, pushes this ever expanding work week. Um, agile promotes the idea that people should go home at a reasonable hour. Often developers will think more clearly uh, when they are walking their dogs or when they're driving. Um, an agile project should have a challenging phase. There shouldn't be any project crashes. The team shouldn't have a flurry of activity at the end of the sprint. Um, even though they are not building cars, developers are the same limits on their productivity, right? Um, the team will only have a marginal increase in, in completing stories if they are asked to work for 11, uh, 12 hours a day. So there is much, uh, they are, they are, most developers are better off going home than starting fresh the next day. Um, so that's the story. Agile projects should be run like um, um, marathons. It's like they should have rigorous, but consistent work pace. Uh, that, that, that the team should have a predictable and practical work day. So the team should also have their own work history to determine the sustainable phase. So when it comes to velocity, um, I move to the next slide. So, so the, you, you'll see that uh, how much they have worked and then so that they'll see how much the team as such, they'll see how much they have worked and then they'll see how much they will commit to working in the future. This is what commonly called as team's velocity. Uh, typically, the scrum master will calculate the team's velocity uh, delivered in each sprint. 
let's say at the end of the first sprint, you know, a team um, delivered, uh, say, uh, 16 story points. This is the first sprint. Now that the team knows that they can complete 16 story, story points in that sprint, at the end of the sprints, right? They, they do the same thing for the second sprint. Uh, let's say the second sprint, they completed uh, 17 story points. Uh, then, 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 the, then the Scrum Master has enough information to make a rough guess at the team's velocity. Uh, their average first three sprints will become the, um, the average uh, uh, team. The three sprints will be the team's uh, average of that will be the team's velocity, which is what we call it as velocity in rolling average, right? Um, one of the challenges with the velocity is, is in velocity being often misused is that many at times your senior managers, uh, management team will sometimes try to push to increase the velocity of the team, right? They, that means that team is being, that they think that means that the team is being productive. But remember that story points are relative estimates. The team assigned them in the planning focus sessions, right? I once worked in an organization where a senior manager was pushing the, the team to achieve greater velocity. They thought um, increasing the velocity Increasing the velocity uh, means uh, increasing the productivity of the team overall. The team started out with a velocity of 15, the manager pushed, him, pushed it to 18, 25, and 30. The manager was very delighted to see the team reaching the goals uh, of uh, hyper productivity. In reality, the team wasn't uh, really uh, completing more work. They were just estimating the work with the higher numbers. It is important to keep this in mind when estimating velocity. These are numbers really created by the team for the team, which is, which is, which is anyone from outside the team try to alter this number, then it becomes uh, much um, less useful. So coming back to the, uh, so velocity is a, a measured value and it is only applicable for the same team. And many at times velocity is seen uh, as seen as a historical data against these things which we have listed. You know the technology shouldn't change. If the technology changes, the velocity becomes irrelevant. If if a domain, if, for example, if you're building um, software application for for a specific domain and you're being asked to do a similar one for another domain, doesn't make sense at all. Same with the team. Um, many at times. Uh, he, uh, with large, uh, large scrum, uh, large scrum at scale or large scale scrum, there are there are a lot of teams who work on interdependencies. And then the product owner uh, manages a, a, a tribe, which is a group of scrum teams, and uh, many a times the the teams um, uh, organization structure shouldn't change. The but the people in the guild we call it guild because the chapters cut across the tribes and they change, people change. And every time people change, for example, in, in a scrum team one, there's a business analyst and he moves to scrum team two. He works as a business analyst in the scrum team two, but the velocity doesn't uh, remain the same, it changes. Um, there are tools uh, we use uh, uh, to track velocity, mostly it's in, done in Jira, uh, but if the tools changes, the velocity changes too. Uh, and also the working environment, we most likely we are adapting to remote working. There are challenges with the teams being able to collaborate with remote uh, working style and structure. This again is going to affect. Uh, uh, so that's one of the key reasons uh, we only keep the velocity as a measured thing, as a reference item for, uh, for that particular team's um, uh, performance. It's not a reference for comparing with another team or another squad or another scheme and seeing. So it doesn't have any relative uh, meaning for uh, uh, velocity. So that said, um, I think we have one more slide. So this is the last slide actually. So why, why do we don't have a velocity in the first, initially, if you start a new team, we don't have a, uh, velocity, uh, the range here measures the accuracy of the velocity. In the first iteration or the first sprint, we'll have very less accuracy of the velocity being measured. 
um, because the story points as what we went through are being um, numbers which are put as as a part as we go further into the sprints as the team progresses further into the iterations uh, this number becomes more accurate at some point in time we'll be 100% accurate um, the average industry standard is around 80 to 90 percent accurate throughout the uh, phase of the project. Um, so with that, I believe uh, we are to the end of the session quite fast, isn't it? Um, okay, we'll now jump into uh, question and answers. So the way we will do it is in a similar uh, fashion. Um, if you guys have any questions we didn't address in this session, or if you have any clarification related to the topics we covered, you may you may ask your questions now. Hi everyone, please feel free to unmute yourself and discuss directly with yes. Hoa and Barney in this Q and A session. Can I request if we have, we have um, unmuted everybody from the host, or do we need to do so? No, oh, it's okay. People can, yeah, okay. everyone can. Any questions? Yes, uh, I have one question. Uh, you mentioned that uh, commonly the commercial part uh, promises something that uh, makes us uh, realize some miracles. And um, regarding that, uh, is, isn't it better to have uh, this kind of approach before the the project is um, it's getting closed on the on the deal? Uh, I would like to answer that. Uh, thanks, Claudio. Um, uh, actually, that that situation happened many times uh, when the um, when we come up with the fixed price project. Normally, it is fixed price project. And uh, to be honest, in the software development, we we most uh, we the, we uh, less favor the fixed price project because the risk come to us. Uh, somehow, when the sales team agree with their uh, with the client about a very specific time and cost and and to deliver something and they 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 don't want to, uh, they just based on the historical data they think that there there was some uh, previous project in his history they work sim uh, the team works similarly and they think they they can come up with a, a their similar amount of effort so they they giving the proposal to the client so we need to align with the sales team about the process and also giving the agile approach about uh, adjusting during the time of development, changing and let the, let the client understand about the benefit of having agile that will, that will help us to avoid the situation. For example, when client understand about the risk we might have when we do the estimation at the beginning, we want to do the estimation for the whole project when the, when the, uh, when uncertainty level is the highest, because at the beginning of the project, we don't know, we know nothing. We, the thing we know is very, very less, but we need to, to estimate for the whole time of the project. It is too much risky. And the risk come to us and even come to the client, it will impact to the business of the client as well. So we need to align with the sales team to understand about the HI approach and changing the way of uh, estimation and collaboration between the development team and client to avoid that happen. Okay, thank you. Uh, one last question regarding this, um, this alignment, uh, is it a good practice uh, to have a consultancy first with the, with the customer to have a, a better approach on the size of the project, maybe some um, investment that the customer makes, or maybe that 
our company makes on on a, on a sales risk um, or or on a, on an investment that we do upfront to take the client. Yeah. Um, okay. So normally, uh, um, I, I was like we we have a sales team and the solution architect team. So the solution architect team is the is the one who will with client on the solution and then advise. Uh, giving the advice and consultancy to the client about how we do the approach. So the sales team is the business person. So sometimes they don't understand about the technical challenging uh, things that may happen in the future with the, the, with the requirement. They just want to get the deal. And then the solution architect is the one who understand about the team. And when they work more with the team, closely with the team, they understand about the effort of the team. We, when we do more, we have more historical data and we have more accurate estimation. And the, the best way is trying to convince client to use the same approach of Archive and the transfer in between the development team and, and, the, and the client. So client will see the deliverable by the end of every single sprint. They will understand the team effort and they understand and they build a trust about the time when we to do together. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Just to add, there's another um, market practice is uh, many consultancy firms follow as a fee at risk model. That means a small part of the service is provided to the client free of cost by doing like a two days discovery design workshops to understand the solution and requirements better. And this is given as a free of cost. And this will help us uh, help the team to get better understanding about the solution they are proposing to build. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. We have some other questions in the chat. Uh, so the first question say, okay, let, let me come up. The first question is from Cesar. Uh, any source where we can double check the story point estimation technique? Uh, when you estimate a project time and cost, do you prefer establishing a ranks with curves or just the best number estimated? So in this one, uh, um, Bernie, I would like to answer. And if you have any other ideas, you can, you can add to my answer. So, yeah, yeah. so when we do the estimation with the project we have several uh, point of time during the project life cycle to do the estimation the first thing is uh, the first uh, time when we do the estimation is the estimation to the proposal proposed to the client that is probably for a higher level and when we do the development we will do the story point estimation by story and by the end of by the end of every single sprint we have the screen review that means we look back the there, uh, what we deliver during the spin, and also we have the retrospective. When we look back what we did right and wrong, or the, and also we can check if the story point we deliver is accurate or not. And then we are just by the next spin. So Cesar, uh, does that answer your questions? Yep, thank you, man. Thank you. So another question from Ricardo. Uh, if in a project management, the tool to show the, the roadmap of the project is the, the Gantt, what's the tool in Archive? So in Archive, we, we have so many tools because Archive is flexible. So we have many, many tools for, uh, we have the roadmap of the project. It is not like the roadmap from in a Gantt chart, because in the gun chart, that is traditional uh, waterfall uh, project management, we break down every single task in the project into a line in the gun chart. And we have the timeline for each one of that and match that together. But in Archive, normally we do the product roadmap by having the group of features to be delivered by a very, very specific. Maybe we define a release, a batch of release, and then we have the group of features to be delivered be released on that. And it is not very, really specific by which one will be delivered on what exact day. We group everything together. And then we 
we uh, we have the planning for the release and then we have another smaller uh, planning by spring planning and also we have an, another smaller deliver uh, planning is daily planning so the gun chart uh, the uh, the um, in Acha, we don't we some some teams still use the gun chart but for me i don't prefer the gun chart uh in my team normally i'm using jira and showing by the end of the sprint by the uh, release and also we deliver, uh, we show how many story points, what is the feature which we deliver to the, to the stakeholder by the end of the sprint. And the key important thing is like, the roadmap is very high level and we have a group of feature we expect to be deliver, but based on the real reality, we may end up of something different, depends on the priority defined by the product owner and and the feedback from the stakeholder. Sorry, there's another uh, question actually on, uh, I like to take that bar. Uh, sorry, oh, oh, you answered Ricardo's first question, right? The other one is uh, yeah. bugs. Why do we not estimate bugs? Bugs are a very uncertain uh, piece. We, we don't, but there is a practice we follow. Uh, is uh, if we if we have a large projects with multiple sprints and then we we as a part of uh, uh, the sprint planning we do a one week sprint uh, we call it refactor or technical depth uh, or bug fix sprints uh, which will then be it's a part of planning that means you don't know which that sprint will be used or not but you still have a one week uh, sprint these are basically to fix bugs or um, uh, remove any kind of uh, technical depth which has been built over those prints and uh, that is one way to do that otherwise we do estimate bugs as a part of the sprint uh, uh, backlog planning sessions because we not only take it from backlog we we the same team if they are working to fix bugs they will also be assigned uh, bugs into that and then it comes into the estimation uh, part uh, I, I would like to add something more on, on that thing. So the bug is a part of the user story. The reason why we are having that is because when we, when we estimate a user story, that is estimation and we, we estimate based on the complexity of the user story. So the complexity already covers that we may make the mistake during the time of development. So the bug arises from the user story the effort to fix that bug already included into the original estimation of that user story. That is the, the case when we don't add, we don't assign point to the to the bug. But the, the another case when we have the points assigned to the bug is like uh, after having before we releasing the product, we have the uh, the regression that for some for something. So that's arise some other. Um, other uh, other other feature that they call a bug because it arises from some from some missing user uh, missing part of their uh, feature or something. So it is not come from original user story. We call that a bug a regression bug. We might we might end up with adding some story point for that because it is something we deliver adding to their existing uh, product feature. Okay, um, question from Hela Dio. How can we integrate the sprint planning review retrospection into the, uh, see uh, the ideal uh, way is to, is that the retrospection planning and estimation is done during the two week sprint itself. But a common practice is that the end of sprint last day would be, the previous sprint would be the planning session for the next sprint. It also depends on how big uh, the, uh, the backlogs are the, the the we don't actually plan a separate session. We the two weeks should include the planning and the uh, retrospection. All ceremonies needs to be a part of the two weeks itself. We shouldn't take uh, any extra days or um, any extra plannings to be able to do this. Yeah. So. Uh... Um, when we have the when we go in with the uh, the scrum framework, that means we know the uh, the uh, the scrum ceremony will be uh, added into every single sprint. We have the time for sprint planning, 
We have the time for the retrospective. We have the time for backlog grooming. And also we have time for daily, daily stand-up as well. So those time will be like we estimate, we, we, didn't, we won't understand that the time for development during the spin will not, co will not include those time of the event. So we don't count exactly how, mu how much of time we need to do, we need to do with, the, uh, with the spin, but we know that from the first spin, we estimate maybe we spend, we can cover about um, 16 points. So the next spin should be somehow around that number. It never go into the exactly number. Okay, so another look like we missed another uh, another questions from Luis, uh, which is the best way to evaluate the client on the estimation process. So I think the um, so when we do the proposal, that is the the first part of business team. Uh, if we focus on the development time when we do the estimation, uh, we want if we want to include the client, um, client will have some impact to the estimation. But the thing is, when we do the spring, uh, the spring grooming, and we do the estimation by the user story, at that time, we should not include the client. The client just, uh, the, the thing client care the most is by the end of the next two weeks, what is the, what are the feature I'm going to have? So we, based on the, 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 the uh, velocity of the team, based on the deliverable we deliver at the last spring, and the client will expect something similar to be delivered on the next screen. So Luis, does that answer your questions? How do we make um, daily meetings more interesting, fun and easy going for the team? Okay, so for the daily meetings, uh, actually we have another session. So on 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 Thursday next the next two days we will share more details about how we do the daily meeting. But you can call it whatever it is as long as you have uh, it. You make sure that it happening. It is like we call that daily scrum, or we call that uh, team gathering. You you can call that like. Um, strategy planning or whatever you name it. it 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 is like your team could design that how to make how people make we feel good on that the the important thing is that make sure it happened daily and what is covered in that daily meetings for example the daily meeting some some team end up by having that like a reporting status it is not right so we need to um to let everybody aware of how the daily meeting is. It is kind of a planning session because we share the planning. What I'm gonna do today is my planning. So I'm sharing with the team about my progress, my, my planning. So it, how it impact to the others. So for example, I have the story that uh, my impact to the story that Bernie is working. I'm sharing my, my, my status, my progress, my plan for today, that, so he can adjust his, his plan for that. So we will talk more details on the next session to each other on the next two days. And uh, uh, David, uh, your question about the historic information for the organization on best practices to file and document this information. Um, I believe uh, the, good way is to have a kind of toolkit uh, and uh, have these things uh, shared um, many a times it is put in a confluence uh, page or if you have an intranet within the organization you can create a toolkit a basic web based toolkit uh, which includes you all your um, processes and frameworks uh, otherwise it's confluence yes we do have a similar one for our organization yeah, so I would like to add something to this one. So as we know that historical data is very, very important to do the estimation. The reason why, because 
when we do more, we know we understand the the, uh, the the velocity of the team. For example, if we work on similar project, similar fun, uh, similar products, then the the next product will be like roughly around that uh, amount of effort. Maybe it's different because of some other factor coming uh, to into uh, the picture. For example, we have different team member. Maybe we have. Uh, junior member joining the development team, they need some time to work, to learn. But actually, more the more information we have from histor historical data, the more accurate the estimation should be. So we can store that by any company will have a different way to store the historical information. Uh, um, like we can have the, we can store the historical information about what is the project and what is the start day, end day what is the team working and what is the major skill of that the te technology, the tech stack, and what is the, the mistake we made, what is the, the top challenges that we got, we got during the time of development that, so we can avoid that happening in the future. For example, we face this, this, the, the situation about a technical problem, then the, the next, uh, the, the future project that we are getting, having the same situation. So we know that, okay, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get the same challenge during the time when we de deliver. We have more time to prepare for that. So the, the more information you lock at historical data, the, the better is help for the estimation and the project work. Okay, thanks a lot guys. Thank you. So, um, anyone has any other questions? All right. Uh, I think uh, if no one has any questions, we would like to thank to uh, thank to you to join us here. So, Ngoc, I will transfer to you if you want to say something. Yeah. Thank you, Anha and Barney again for the session estimate estimating today and thanks for all the questions you raised to our speaker. Um, the last, last thing we need your help is the feedback. We would like to hear your opinion about how we run the program today so we can learn from it and improve from it. Uh, so please have us take one or two more minutes using the QR codes or the link I passed in chat box and share with us how you think about our HI estimating workshop today. Yeah. Um, after, after the workshop, you, you will receive this summary email from us and we still have another session HI planning on Thursday. So please join us. We have to see all of you in the next session. So the next session will be for the planning. After we do the estimating, we have something to do the planning. So uh, looking forward to meeting all of you again on that sessions. And thanks again for joining us today. Thanks everybody. Have a Thank nice, you. nice evening. Yeah, Thank you. see you. Thank you. Thank you.